It's totally. like, look at this show. It's called Love is Blind, but we're proving to you that love isn't blind. Yes. And you're enjoying it because you're a sick mother. <laughs> Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Love is Blind recap, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing okay. We have a finale to recap. Is this the finale? Yes, but then there's a reunion, which is really the finale, let's be honest. Ah, yeah, yes. everyone really wants to see what happens then. Over a year later, apparently. A year later. That's crazy. It's impressive. How do they keep that a secret? I have no idea. I'm sure there are disguises involved. Like wigs. Disguise? Really? <laughs> yes. I'm convinced. Apparently with The Bachelor that happens. Really? And that's only just a couple months. Wow. So shall we get going? Let's do it. So we pick up with Jimmy and Chelsea with what we thought was a BS cliffhanger at Carowinds. And we were wrong. It was no BS. It was different from what we thought it was going to be, though. And there was some tinkling music right after. So you're like, oh, they screwed us on the on the cliffhanger. Yes. But they didn't screw us. They gave us a full cliffhanger. They did. Well, first, he, Jimmy, this, the cliffhanger was he had asked what would happen at the altar. Chelsea says, it's literally been a roller coaster of emotions. Andy, <sighs> you groaned. She says they've gotten through all the crap and quote, yesterday I was having an off day. And Jimmy just smiles a bit at this, like acknowledging it. And then she says in a condescending tone, and so were you. <laughs> Always has to do that. Yeah. What is that? That's some like I may, if I'm ever wrong, which mm -hmm. she hates to admit. Yes. You have to pull teeth to get her to admit she did something wrong. Yeah. If she's ever wrong, you're also wrong. Yes. Mid apology. She's like, and so were you. You also did this thing. How can anyone deal with this? I, to me, it's somehow out of all the things Chelsea does, this is top three annoying for me because it means she never truly apologizes. She says she feels good moving forward. And now we see the actual cliff. Jimmy says he wants them to work so bad, but he doesn't want to go to the altar. He can't. She starts to tear up here. He brings up the Amy Johnny thing being the strongest couple. Apparently, you know, we saw him sort of take issue with that at yeah, that yeah. party. I think this is a BS. No, it's a BS excuse. Come on. Yeah. Is, is he's not actually bothered by that. I, I felt like throughout this conversation, like I have so many thoughts on Jimmy and why he chose this moment to do this. But I think it was partly really good reasons mixed with some like grasping at straws reasons yeah, just to have ridiculous. ammunition. It's yeah. like a guy literally on a medieval rack and he's complaining about the temperature in the room. <laughs> literally? <laughs> oh, no. But the guy in my analogy is literally on the rack. <laughs> So it counts. <laughs> Chelsea accuses him of knowing he was going to say no this entire time. And he's like, no, I, I love you. And she's like, I love you. He says he was optimistic before that argument. He was good to go. And she says, what about what he did to her? She's been walking on eggshells with him. She claims that she can't tell him things because he gets upset. And then he's like, like what? <laughs> <laughs> Name one thing. And Chelsea apparently can't think of one example and instead relies on their latest argument, which I thought was a hilarious thing to fall back on because out of all the arguments they have had, all the issues they have had, I think she was the most indefensible in that argument that yeah, she uses she as an example. She thinks that if they have a fight, it's his fault. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the default. Yeah. She thinks it always took two to tango every single time. No, it doesn't always take two to tango. She yeah. tangos alone. <laughs> She does. This now morphs into a conversation about the relationship he has with this female friend who apparently he had had sex with at some point and told Chelsea off camera in confidence saying, don't reveal this on camera. And Chelsea, of course, defends herself. She's like, you text all the time. And he is like, well, you are friends with your ex-boyfriend. Presumably they also slept together, right? And she's friends with him. They talk all the time. And she's like, oh, no, we don't. And he's like, you FaceTimed when we first, you know, got back into Charlotte. It's first of all, I think it's a testament that guys who've had sex with women in the past are now good friends with them. Absolutely. To transition from sex to friend yes. shows a lot of character yeah. in a man. If you remain friends with someone that you used to date or had that, you know, some sort of relationship with in that way, it's you're right, especially as a man, it means you don't only see women as people to have romantic right. relations with. You can with. have both. Yes. You I, value them as a friend. My two best female friends on earth, I have both had sex with hundreds of times. <laughs> and I never once, 
ever mm. think about having sex with them again. It never even crosses my mind. Yeah. And it's there, like having sex with my sister at this point. Yeah. And there are people, you know, who don't fall into that category. You know, they stay friends with the sort of hope or, you know, this, it, there's always sort of sexual tension. And I know those relationships exist, so I don't mean to make it sound like they don't. But I agree. I think that this is an experience thing. And if you really are ready for a current relationship, then you won't see those people in that way. We are both living proof of this. Yes. Sex is just another thing, a very personal thing you experience with a human being. Yes. It doesn't mean that that's forever tarnishing your relationship. It's it, always a sexual relationship. I, that's like saying if I went to China with a friend, yeah. that friend is my Chinese friend now. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that it's almost better to have had sex with someone and known it didn't work out in that romantic way and that, but you really valued each other as human beings so you stayed friends yeah. that it is to have never consummated but always had sort of sexual tension where you sort of wonder with someone yes. but you've never explored it so you're always kind of like oh I wonder what yeah. that might have been like that's to me yes. worse she's worried about him having had sex with this this girl and yeah. now being friends with her what people should be worried about yeah. is guys who have a lot of girlfriends who they haven't had sex yeah. with but they're probably thinking about <laughs> or they're at least you know where there's sexual tension you yes. need to add that as a caveat right. I mean, you know, <laughs> people are gonna broad, come at I'm you i'm speaking broadly here <laughs> so now he's like but you reveal this thing on national television i asked you not to and she's like i apologized i i it was my feeling yes yeah, she apologized after literally being threatened to be broken up with yeah and also the i apologized followed by it was my feelings so yeah i already apologized and by the way i didn't need to apologize because it was my feelings he says it makes him feel like he can't trust her that's a problem it was a huge setback he can't marry her. She says this is an excuse. She says, you throw in the towel with one issue? That's marriage. Marriage is not easy. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, <laughs> with Chelsea, it certainly isn't. Oh, blood, sweat, Marriage and is not easy. Can you imagine someone telling you marriage is not easy after dating for two weeks? Oh, my God. And right before going into a wedding. Uh, he says he can't trust someone who divulges his deepest, darkest secrets on camera after he told her not to. And she says, your deepest, darkest secret is your friend Ugh. nice score this, one for the home team right and he says continue to tell me why i'm making the right decision wow. here she goes off and cries while he sits there not even looking that upset okay so we have to discuss the timing of this what an interesting call look do i think this is the right outcome absolutely oh of course right i was really legitimately worried that they were gonna do you get think married. anyone in america is like oh this couple should be together no Right. No, no one. Not one person. Not one person. There is one person. Who? I, I want them to write in. <laughs> I know you're out there and you're probably listening to these recaps. Please tell us why you think Jimmy and Chelsea should be together. Yeah. I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. I won't judge you. Yeah. And what, what do they get out of it? I'm going to judge you, actually. But I'm going to judge you with, with uh, honor. <laughs> what do they get out of it? Are we going to read it at the next recap? And we're gonna we're gonna post an Instagram story about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel okay. So this is my theory about what happened here. I think Jimmy truly tried to give this a shot, despite what some people say. I really think when it's good with Chelsea, it's really good with Chelsea. Like I think that they have fun together, yeah. but she is so self sabotaging that there was just. Too many fights, too many ups and downs. It was too frustrating. And that last fight was the straw. Like, I think that was it. And I think that he had real remorse over mending things. And this, therefore, he tried to, like, backstep. So this day, uh, this show confuses me a little bit. Okay. So this day... Is this like a ruse? Are there are producers like, listen, just make believe things are okay for today and then you can say whatever well, you I, want? Okay, well, so that's what I'm getting to. So I think he had remorse over having mended things. Yeah. And then he needed to go to producers to get permission because apparently they are legally bound to make it to the altar. Okay. So he got permission. I think that he went and got permission and they were probably, this just felt so produced to me. Who would do this? I don't think Jimmy is that kind of person. I do not think he would go to Carol Wins and spend a whole day with her f for fun just to do that and then break up with her at the end of the day. I like, like how you had to say Carol Wins. <laughs> like that's the place. Like you don't go to Carol Wins and then break up with somebody. 
<laughs> to be honest, I've never even heard of Carowinds. I honestly don't know what Carowinds is. Yeah. Is that the amusement park? Yes. Oh, okay. Apparently yeah. it has sentimental value. For, oh my God. Maybe because he went as a kid and he, you know, has emotional attachment. He was like, oh, but then I'm going to miss out on my day at Carowinds. <laughs> So That's he chose <laughs> he chose Carowinds over Chelsea. Yeah, good choice. Yeah, I mean, I mean Carowinds. Should... Yeah, fun. <laughs> It's fun. You may you may get sick on a roller coaster, but that's still better at than at least you're the you only know, one on that roller coaster. You're the only. Thank you. You didn't yes. have to wait in line for that roller no. coaster. Yeah. So yeah, that's my suspicion. I think that the powers that be did not allow him to end things with Chelsea. They probably, who knows whether they threatened him or not, but apparently they are financially liable, we mm. heard, if they don't make it to the altar for a yes or a no. And I think that the powers that be wouldn't give him the green light on this until they knew Clay was going to be saying no. Got it. That's what I think. This That's just felt produced theory. Yeah. to me. But, th- but then again, what's all with the Jimmy talking about how he's so sure about Chelsea and how much he loves her after he got after- back with her and in between when he broke up with her? Like, I, I, look, I, I don't want to fall Jimmy because yeah, yeah. Jimmy is like, to me, almost bordering on like Jesus Christ in the show. <laughs> Like a guy's bearing a heavy cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until now. Now <laughs> yes. he's not bearing the cross. But I just don't understand what that was about. And, mm-hmm. I, and I can't, I was thinking about it. I honestly went to sleep on it. I was like, well, what's uh, going on with that? Okay. Like, can I, am I going to give him a pass yeah. for that? Is that just part of the show? Are producers pushing that kind of thing? Or was he truly confused? And in the end, like, same way with Clay, like reality just smacked him in the face or, Carowinds. And he was like, I can't do this. This is impossible. This is ridiculous. What's Mm, happening here? I do feel like Jimmy was confused. Like, I think that unless you've been, and look, I have not been on Love is Blind, but, and it's been a long time since I was on The Bachelor, but it's shocking how confused you get. Right. Like, tell me about this. Yeah, there are, you know, there's a whole team of professionals whose job it is to confuse you. Yeah, your Truman showed. Yeah, your Truman showed and you are there for one season and then you leave. They've been doing this for years. Yeah. They have you profiled down to your every idiosyncrasy. I hear that and that's where I land. Mm. I think, the the, the reason I think Jimmy was sincere is Mm. because Jimmy's a bad actor. I don't yeah. trust his acting skills. If someone said to me, you know, we need a fill in for this movie, you know, who are you going to pick? Yeah. The last person on earth I pick is Jimmy. I yeah. think he'd be terrible. He mm-hmm. doesn't know how to fake it, honestly. I think the makeup was was where we maybe saw if he was acting a little bit. You know, she comes back and he says he was ready for marriage and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, is that it? So we're not, you know, is it over? And she apologizes and he's like, okay. Like, I think that that might have been the turning point. Like, well, I think if that's he, true, then he's the greatest actor of all time. I mean, there wasn't that much in between then and this, if mm. you think about it. How much? They're talking about what the argument yesterday. I, I have the a day hard before. time with the timeline, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure how much time has passed between all these events. Yeah. But in the end, I'm going to take Jimmy's side fully on this. I think the guy, I agree with you. I think he was confused. Uh-huh. I think it got wrapped up in it. Yeah. And I think he suddenly was like, I need the exit and I need to get to the exit like yesterday. I only wish that he had and maybe had been allowed, we have to keep that in mind, to just end it when it ended. Like yeah. that fight is where this should have ended and he would have come out smelling like roses if it had ended in that spot. But and he would I, have missed out on some TV time. And Carol wins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in conclusion, let's give percentages of what we think was like acting versus sincere versus producer manipulation, all the things. So, okay. For Jimmy, like okay. his choice here. So on three, we're going to say producer involvement or okay. rules. Got it. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, 25. 25. Okay. And so, and Jimmy being sincere, he really loved her. One, two, three, 35. Okay. And Jimmy acting at least a little bit at some point. I mean, we know the answer to this now. (laughs) Okay. The remaining values. For me, it's 25. 30. Okay. Yeah. I think that he 
played along at some point and he probably trotted over to producers at some point and was like, please, like, I don't want, you know, we have to give him credit. He did not want to say no at the altar. Yeah. Right. No. That's why he, he did this. Her. He did. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying he's some saint, but this could have been a lot crueler than yeah. this. I think going all the way to the altar is cruel. A hundred percent agreed. Yeah. Yeah. In the end, Jimmy was a good guy. I, I mean, think honestly, so. people are going to crucify him. I know they That's, are, but it's so ridiculous. And also I think a lot of people on these shows act to some degree. Of course. There may be more acting in a way on this show now that I think about it than The Bachelor. Well, they're certainly acting more on it than they used to. Apparently the first season, you know, you didn't know you could walk out of this show with a million followers on Instagram. So I think the stakes are set a little too high on this show. (laughs) I agree. You got to get married. Or make it to the altar. The altar. Even on the bachelor, you just get engaged, yes. which is, let's be honest, meaningless. Yes. I mean, not in not if you actually do it in real life. Uh-huh. Like, that should be very meaningful. Yeah, yeah. But on the bachelor, let's be perfectly honest. The next day they could leave. I mean, mm-hmm. they don't because contractually it's bad for them. Instagram, it's bad for them. But they could just leave. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. They're yeah. fine. It really cheapens everything, right? That feeling like shows they cheapen a proposal, an engagement. They have this sort of faux reverence for marriage, for it's so mm. sanctimonious, you know, like, oh, a wedding is so serious. But really the premise of these shows is just cheapening it. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, we will move on now. And I just want to add one last thing. Okay. I don't think I think Chelsea's reaction to this dumpage was as elevated as I expected it. Oh. And that to me is also telling. I almost feel like she was like, this isn't that surprising. Oh. And I would have expected more. Maybe she hadn't drank enough that day. I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. But, but I actually thought that her reaction suggested, suggested that. She was like, yeah, this is probably going to happen. I mean, I have to admit, I'm very interested in the reunion. Yeah. To hear them. I mean, this was not, I didn't quite get my rocks off fully on the closure here. You were so let down, Andy. You were like, wait, I have to watch the rest of this finale. Chelsea and Jimmy are just gone. Yeah, I thought the ending was going to be like the ending of a Michael Bay movie. Instead, (laughs) it was like the ending of like a French existentialist movie. (laughs) Rocket, rocket money, rocket money is in minor key because I like to save my money, but it makes me sad to lose it when I don't have it in the first place. (laughs) I love how all your rocket money jingles are rock. The only thing I can think of when I think of saving a lot of money is rock. It. <laughs> money. <laughs> So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that you connect to your various online accounts and then it starts tracking your spending and keeping track of when you have, especially recurring payments, subscriptions, Mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, do you even know you have this? And we both speak from experience when we say Rocket Money has saved us money for subscriptions that I legitimately forgot about. I'm ashamed to admit this, but apparently over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about. I think the number is probably higher. They're just lying. (laughs) Yeah, they're embarrassed. Yeah. And on top of that, they make it so easy to cancel. You can cancel with one tap. You don't have to go through the fine print of each individual website to try to cancel. And they will help negotiate lower bills for you. They're all about just saving you money in all the little ways. To me, rocket money is a thing that should just come with being a human. You know, like you you get a computer, it comes with software. Yes. You should just come with rocket money. Yes. People don't appreciate the things that are absent as much as they appreciate things that are in their face. Yeah, things that are found. Found. Like if they found $100 on the ground, they'd be like, oh my God, I'm $100 richer. But they don't notice the absence of spending $100 on things that maybe they forgot. They didn't even know about. Yeah, they they don't even need. Rocket Money is is a thankless company. (laughs) Well, speaking of which, they save their members up to $740 a year when they use all of their features. Can you imagine if you just found $740 on the ground? Rocket Money has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Wow. So Rocket Money is the personal finance app that finds and cancels unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spendings, and helps lower your bills all in one place so you can help grow your savings. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel unwanted subscriptions today by going to rocketmoney.com slash shandy. That's rocketmoney.com slash shandy, rocketmoney.com slash shandy. Okay, so we'll move on now to the bachelor and bachelorette parties. Not much to touch on here. The ladies go dancing. They chat about the guys. Amy and AD chat where Amy reveals she and Johnny have not had sex yet. 
And AD's like, oh, you're going to buy the car without test driving it. Mm. And then in her confessional, she <laughs> says she doesn't believe Amy. She's like, Amy's too spicy. They're effing. Yeah. I, I do think AD seemed wasted here. And as funny as I confess I found this, part of me was like, oh, AD. Mm. Mm. It, it mm. wasn't a great look. It wasn't a great opinion. look. It was funny, but it wasn't a great look. And I honestly don't, I don't think it's true. I actually I, believe, I don't think they've had sex. I agree. That's a weird thing to to brag about. I, I feel like, <laughs> yeah. If you haven't had sex, you just don't talk about not having sex. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, AD doesn't have the context about the birth control. You know, Amy had mentioned that, but I don't think she went into that much detail enough at the, you know, they're in a loud bar for AD to really recognize that that's the reason. I, I th think they've done everything you can do except the thing that makes babies. <laughs> yes. That's my opinion. It's still not the same. It's still not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. You can think that you know how that's going to go. And you can be like, oh, I've seen the material. I've seen the situation. I feel good about it. And it still just might not be what you expect. I'm just saying. You know what it's like? It's like test driving a car in the passenger seat instead of the driver's seat. Yes. Ooh, good one, Andy. Thanks. I liked that. Okay, so now we are at AD and Clay's wedding day. Andy, you said, is it just me or is the show over? And I said, what do you mean? And you're like, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to claim a little I told you so here because I was like, I feel like you something's going to go wrong. You because got it. There's no way there's going to be two no. weddings. It's too smooth sailing. Granted. Uh, I didn't want to be right about that. No, I'm glad you were right. I, it's not a happy I told you no, so. No, I, I, I'm not glad that it happened, but I'm happy for the show because otherwise it would be boring. <laughs> In her confessional, AD says she likes how she can be every version of herself with Clay. Uh, very cute shot of Clay gazing at his wedding ring up close. And Andy, when we saw this clip, you said, he's not saying no. He sold me. He, there, he was like this. He was like looking at his ring, like just like, like up close like None that. None of it made sense He looked to like me. a little boy yeah. looking at a ring. He was all excited. He talks so brightly about their relationship. I, I wrote, I just find him so cute. He's softer in this relationship. I really bought what I was being sold. 80s fabulous mother arrives in a fabulous pinstripe blazer and wool hat. I just love her. She says she just met Clay's mom. She loves her. I thought this was all so cute. And there's a scene where Clay chats with all his friends and they're all talking about feelings. And Andy, you approved of their white Vs. <laughs> Oh, strong V game. Two out of five of his friends were wearing white Vs. Yeah. And now Clay's father, Trevor, arrives and the music stops. And this, to me, really feels like an important scene. Yeah. I feel like we watched Clay shift mm -hmm. here. And I am i don't mean that to suggest that he made his decision based on this scene or based on having seen his father. But I think that he was not exaggerating when throughout the season he has mentioned the influence his father has had on his yeah. life so first we have to talk about the striking friend dynamic i feel between them yeah you know how sometimes you meet a friend and her mom or whatever and you're like oh wow they're like friends they're not like mother daughter they're friends mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. i felt here it did not feel like a father-son relationship mm -hmm. And we learn his dad was an Olympic runner. Yeah. Kind of felt like he wanted Hardcore. everyone to know that. That's okay. It? You know what? I give it to him. <laughs> give it to him. He's like suddenly listing off his resume on TV. Well, I mean, honestly, the guy's digging out of a big hole. So why not throw out some resume points? I don't know if he knew how much of a hole he was digging himself out of. I think he had an idea. Oh, you think? Yeah. He says he couldn't be more proud of Clay. He says that a lot of what he and Clay share, he didn't get from his own father. His own father mm. wasn't present. He says his mother, so this is Trevor's mother, so Clay's grandmother always told him, treat your wife right and be good to your kids. And in his confessional clay says that this conversation on camera was the most emotion his father had ever poured out to him wow so interesting very interesting it's interesting that this was you know we haven't seen his father all season we've heard clay talk about it. i'm just what do you think he was told coming into this like i'm wondering if he i don't know like i get that it's a wedding day all these things it's just felt sort of like his father came in with an agenda i don't mean to look at him through that negative light it just it feels like maybe he was you know prepped by a producer like you know really let your emotions out this is a big day i don't know it I didn't feel natural i don't know what happened there and it's too hard to parse the dynamics yes. between him and his father but i do think to to give clay the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. i do think his father turned the tide on the wedding i 
I feel a little bit like that. Anyway, this turns into a sort of TED talk about winning. Mm. I didn't really know why this had a place in this conversation. But his father says, the one who wins is the one who thinks he can. Mm. Like, okay. It sort of felt like his father didn't seem to think Clay was going to get married either. It was very odd. It was almost like he was speaking in code. That yes. Clay understood, but yes. we didn't quite catch. And in his confessional, Clay says this process has brought a lot of truth to him. It has made him look in the mirror and realize he's causing a lot of the issues and stress in, in, in his own life. And he admits he's a lot like his dad. Hmm. Ooh, very foreboding. Yeah. So AD emerges now looking spectacular in her wedding gown. And now we have this you know, wedding. I feel weird saying that now. She walks down the aisle alone, which I thought was beautifully symbolic. Mm -hmm. You know, it took us back to that conversation they had in the Dominican Republic where AD said she sometimes feels sad that she won't have her father to walk her down the aisle. And he misunderstood that. He was like, you're going to marry yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Clay. Yeah, I don't know. Something about AD walking down the aisle alone. She was so powerful. She was so fierce. Like She didn't need anyone else. Mm -hmm. It was really, Mm -hmm. especially knowing what ended up happening here, it just felt very symbolic. And he thanks her for her patience, thanks her for looking out for him. His, I mean, the vows, it felt like he was talking at any point. It didn't yeah. feel like a prepared... No. No. That's when I was kind I mean, of I like, give him credit for improv, but the content was a little weird. Yeah. She, meanwhile, AD, she says she loves how raw he is. He's authentic. He's a powerful man. She appreciates the man he is. She's his biggest cheerleader always. And the officiant says they chose each other based on an intense emotional connection. Looks, age, and finances. Superficial things didn't matter. And Clay says, I didn't say all that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh. Love truly is blind. Uh, AD says I do, and then cue minor cue suspense music. And Andy, you said, "Oh come on, there's no suspense here." We really thought he was going to say still yes. Still sold. We fell for it. I mean, is it possible that Clay didn't quite understand that this was a thing he had to do? Like, did he think that there's an option at the end where you can just say, we're going to date? Yes. And the partner's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool with that. Well, they had this conversation. They had it in the kitchen right after he had signed, you know, deceased Mm. on on that marriage application or whatever. And he said, like, he was like talking about the timeline. Like, that really was foreshadowing. That is his biggest issue. And meanwhile, AD's like, if you're not going to say yes to me now, I don't want to fight for it. Like, she made it clear she did not want to be a long-term fiance. She didn't want to date forever. But I mean, I mean, here he doesn't say I do. He says it would be irresponsible to say I do. And he's going to put the work in for her. She deserves the best. He won't go there if he knows he's not 100% ready. And he says, why does it matter the timeline? And she says, Clay, don't do this. Mm. And then she leaves. I mean, I'm (sighs) torn on this because on one hand, like, do I think he should say yes if he's not 100% ready? Of course not. Right. But should he have let her on that hard until the very end? I mean, I was fooled completely. I was I rarely get fooled that hard. There were a couple of scenes here, like the father scene. I was like, but even then I was like, oh, they're making us think that he's going to say no because of this father scene. He's yeah, actually going to yeah, say yeah, yes, yeah, totally. you know, it's a double sight. Totally. But I'm torn because on one hand, behind the scenes, he's contractually obliged. Maybe he thinks he's going to be liable in some way mm. if he doesn't make it to the altar. I'm not defending him. I, I do think he led her on and it was awful to watch. Yeah. Because AD is just, she's the star of the season, yeah, right? AD is yeah. the one that everyone is coming away from watching Love is Blind season six, wanting to be friends with. Yeah. So you're, we're all rooting for her. I just, I feel like the bad guy is really the people behind the wings. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe you're right. But I, I don't know. I, but I don't mean to defend him. Like, I, I just think that I agree. He should not have said yes if he's not ready. But it's like, did you have to get this far? So after AD has left the scene, Clay and his father chat and his father's telling him how proud of him he is. Yeah. I feel like they were close to a high five. It almost felt like that. Andy, you said it feels like his dad is happy with this outcome. It almost felt like he's his buddy, yeah. and but not one of those buddies that's really happy for his buddy when he f- meets the love of his life and gets married. It's more like, oh, now I don't get to have my single buddy to go out with anymore. Can I tell you what I think happened here? What? This is what I think. Uh-huh. This is, I'm, 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 I have to take, I take a side here. Okay. 
And this is what I think. Okay. There's <laughs> a lot of buildup, yeah, Andy. Is, I know. Now uh, <laughs> I got to make sure what I think is actually something people care about. Okay. So I think that his father is very sensitive to a poor decision in marriage. Okay. He's learned. Yeah. Learned. I don't know if he learned, but he experienced it. Yeah. And I don't think, even if he doesn't have huge regrets for himself, if he kind of got his cake and ate it too, I don't know if he feels that way, but I think that he doesn't want it for his son. I think he wants better for his son. Uh Uh-huh. The same way he wanted better for his son in his sports career. He's like, you know, yeah, I did good, but you really made it. Yeah. You know, he wants his son to do well. And I honestly think he felt that this construct Mm -hmm. was not good. Yeah. He felt like this was going to lead to a, a rash decision and another busted marriage. Yeah. And I really do feel like he was subliminally telling Clay's like, I, AD's a great girl. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Maybe you guys should date, but don't do this. Yeah. Well, he didn't say it out right. But when it was over, yeah. his father seemed like the team just won. Like he was coming back to the dugout. He it was getting high like fives. That. And I do think that he was relieved. And I don't totally fault him for feeling that mm. way. I'm sorry. I know AD's great. Yeah. And I think Clay and AD were pretty good, although there were some issues there. Yeah. No, and you could also argue that Clay showed her who he was. Yeah. He gave her a lot way. of hints and he yeah. told her. Yeah. And, and look, we all fell for it too. Like we all still believed in him, right? You can see why she also yeah. still believed in him because he was so upfront about everything that you kind of, you know, you wanted to believe him. And you know, oh my God, it brings you right back to when they were still in the pods. Do you remember when his AD was talking to another girl? I forget which one, yeah. uh, but about like, you know, oh, I'll help you sort out your problems, like practice on me. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like that's exactly what ended up happening. Yep. It's like he found himself through this process. He learned so much, but she ended up being sort of the sacrificial lamb to get totally. there. Yes. It really came home to roost, yeah. really, everything that he had told her. It's you know what it is? It's one of it's like one of those detective, like an Agatha Christie movie or okay. book where you're like, Oh, I know who it is. Yeah. I mean, this trope has been used so many times now that you, you're you trained to think it's not the person you think it is. Yes. But, but back in the day, like 60, 70 years ago, you're like, yeah, it's definitely the butler. Yeah. So of course the butler. <laughs> Everyone knows, right? It's the butler. With yeah, the yeah, candlestick. The <laughs> yeah. In the, the library. Exactly. <laughs> but you weren't looking at all the little pieces. You weren't doing the thin slicing. Mm-hmm. And I think if you really look back with obviously the knowledge you have now, yeah. if you really look <laughs> back. 2020 vision. Yeah, you'll see. You'll be like, oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, this isn't going to work. It's so true. That's their story. Their yeah. story is like hindsight is 2020. Suddenly everything made sense. And we defended Clay. You know, we really f- believed in him along the way. And a lot of people really have been shitting on him if i'm to be honest but i think it's still a little more nuanced than that it is. because talk about taking two to tango you know and i'm not blaming ad for this at all the, what she can be blamed for is believing in him too much which i don't think is ever a bad thing can, can i tell you what ad needs to do what not you i'm telling everybody okay i guess every time i say something i am telling everybody okay AD needs to find a man who worships her. Yes. Period. Yes. No half step. In. Which should not be that difficult. No, it's it should be pretty easy. Yes. And I'm I not mean, worried about I, her at all. I mean, like worships, like yeah. no questions asked. And but meets her there because she gives more than she receives, and I feel like she's she's okay with that. A little too okay with that. Well, and, and I'm not, I don't want this to be misconstrued. I'm not saying that she needs, she's like needy for that. No. But there's someone we know who is needy for that, but it's not AD. <laughs> no. And she needs to be with someone like that because she deserves it. Yeah. Not because she needs it. Yeah. Because she deserves it. And she's selling herself short. And I think in all of her relationships, just based on what I'm hearing from her mm-hmm. and sort of based on this relationship with Clay. I mean, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. She wasn't getting everything she needed. No. She's selling herself short. She saw him as an investment. He yes. was like a project. You know, it's like, is there going to be a good ROI here? And there wasn't. No, she should not be dating to find out. She should find out and date. Yes. Interesting moment here where Clay asks his father if he should go speak with AD and his father says, yeah, you don't want to appear indifferent. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, but his father's right again. Yeah. But like, did he forget he was on camera? Like it felt very, ugh. 
It felt very calculated. Like, I think Clay should just want to talk to AD. It already felt like because his father was in the room, he was deferring to his father, asking his father for advice, getting his father's approval, being told what to do by his father. It suddenly made everything feel not like um, just raw emotions and more like, oh yeah, this will look good. You know, all the way back to the beginning of Clay's story, he's like, I accumulate things. I, I build myself up with superficial things to cover up for my deep insecurities. And you see it come right back with his father in the yeah. same setting. He's like, should I do this? Oh yeah, you don't want to appear indifferent. He's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, who are you? Like, where did you go? He he, he was not that version when his father I, was not around. I agree. And I, I, again, with everything with Clay to me is more nuanced than what it appears. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of complication with Clay. Totally. And I think that there is... First of all, with a parent, especially a parent that has such a close relationship with their child, yeah. there's an unseen relationship there. There's 100%. there's signals like you you have no idea what's going on. Totally. Like they could just look at each other across the room and they're like, okay, I got you. Yeah. It's unspoken communication. And I think his father knew right out of the gate what was going to happen at that wedding. Mm. And he was playing the whole thing for that ending. And when he said to him, you should go act like, you know, Don't you're appear. not indifferent. Yeah. It was already understood that they knew aforehand that this wasn't going to work. Yeah. And he was like, now this is the thing you do after this. Yeah. I honestly think he was coaching him through something that was predetermined. Oh. And I'm not taking, I'm not in any way making his father a hero. He's not. I'm, I'm just, no, he's not. He, he did some his bad stuff. His father's the villain. I'm sorry. His father's the villain. His father's a bit of a villain. But I do believe that within this context, the communication was sincere. Mm. And I think his father knew what was going on. And I think he just pushed him. He just gave him a little nudge over mm. the cliff. Well, in his confessional, Clay says he needs to work on the emotional empathy side of things. And he doesn't. And he talks about finances here. He's like, oh, and I think, fine, you know, you enter a marriage is entering a business with someone. You need to understand each other finances and he's like i don't understand ad's finances <laughs> yeah what the, <laughs> the hell was that and about? like i agree about the business part like absolutely yeah, but come on but this just felt like that's he was ridiculous. like oh here's a bunch of reasons oh yeah yeah he yeah, just, like that's the reason like you're, you're at the altar and you're like you know what i love you <laughs> but i don't quite understand your finances uh, yeah even this he's like i need to work on the emotional empathy side of things like, he was like well he's he was right dr about jekyll that. mr Hyde. he is right about no that. he is but like even the the version of him that says that is not the version of him that we've seen throughout the season. Can I ask you this question? Did he seem that upset that this ended? Did he ever seem that upset? I think he cared for her deeply. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Clay has the capacity to love yet. And I think Clay said it himself. Mm. He needs to go to therapy. Yeah. He and needs I to think love himself first. Yes. There's he has a, to put the mask on himself first. Yes. There's a gear that he is unable oh to God. shift to. It's like Chelsea. Chelsea also needs to love herself first. More, in order more. There's more. <laughs> more. Yeah. She's like in first gear. Clay is in third gear. But yeah, yeah, I agree. But I'm just saying that the man is missing a gear. Mm. And I, I, I can't fault him because he's not there. He mm. wants to get there. He's had a great disadvantage having his father as his father. Mm. And he wants to get there. Many people who had Clay's father don't say, I need to go to therapy. I need Fair. to work on myself. That, you know what? I'll give you that. That's yeah. true. Don't hate on Clay. Hate on the situation Clay's been put in and respect the fact that Clay is a work in progress. Yeah. Like his name. <laughs> He's Clay. <laughs> okay. So I was just thinking about the name apostrophe and apostrophe suggests possession. Mm -hmm. It suggests something that is yours. Mm -hmm. It's bespoke to that thing. Yes, that An person. apostrophe is called apostrophe, at least I've decided this, uh -huh. because it is yours and only yours. Yes. That apostrophe means whatever comes after the S uh -huh. that's after the apostrophe yes. <laughs> is for you. Yes. Belonging to you, prescribed for you by a board certified dermatologist, perhaps. Because Apostrophe is an online platform that connects you to board certified dermatologists so that you can access prescription skincare without ever having to go to your doctor or a dermatologist, which by the way, can cost the big bucks. Mm -hmm. You never have to leave your sofa. 
You fill out their online consultation. You take selfies of your skin. You describe what your skincare concerns are, and maybe they are acne. Maybe it's fine lines, wrinkles. And by the way, there's oral and topical medication available. You send that over. A board-certified dermatologist reviews your information and prescribes you something. And then from there, it is delivered to your door. You never have to set foot in line at a pharmacy. I don't understand. Why wouldn't you want to go through rush hour traffic to get to the doctor and sit in the waiting room oh. and then pay a lot of money for that oh. and then have to come all the way home in more traffic oh. and then be so tired you can't do anything else with your day? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Oh, oh and, and then go, and to, then the go to the pharmacy. Yeah, honestly, the line at the pharmacy is almost as bad as the waiting room at the derm. And there's always someone turning around telling you <laughs> how bad it is. And then you have to get into a conversation with someone in line at the pharmacy, which yeah. you don't want to do. Also, I also, I, I'm just going to say it. I don't love going to the pharmacy to pick up prescriptions because oftentimes like people are hacking there. Yeah. You know, like people are, they're often sick and I'm just like, ah, totally. I, all I want is my tretinoin. I don't oh. want to have to go through this. Also chest knee, back knee and butt knee. Oh, all the knees yes. are treated. So we have a special deal for our audience, the Shandies right now. You can get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for only $5 when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy. That is a savings of $15 and this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only five dollars and we thank apostrophe for sponsoring this episode okay so clay finds ad now he insists it's irresponsible for him to say yes if he's not 100 percent ready i mean no one's arguing with that he insists it was a game time decision for him it breaks his heart seeing her like this he says it wasn't a no to her she's perfect he's just not ready he's not a husband right now he's not rejecting her but he knows it feels like that and she whispers yeah it does Absolutely heartbreaking to see her cry here. They hug and say, I love you. And she asks, what am I supposed to do now? <sighs> Can I he, tell you something else? What? AD took this like a champ, like like a queen. She could have like exploded so much more. She was wounded and it just hurts so bad because she was like, I'm not enough. It's about me. And you're like, no, it's not you. It is so not you. Maybe you're picker slightly, but that's it. Like it is not she, you. This was She's magnificent. This was maybe the strongest performance being broken up with I've ever seen. Yes. And not and don't call it a performance. I feel like oh, it no, was no. 100%. I'm saying a performance from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm watching a show. Yeah, fair. Okay. I'm watching a performance, whether yeah. she's performing or not. <laughs> okay. whether, whether she likes it or not. Yeah. He says he's not leaving her. He's going to therapy. He's going to do the work. And now we cut away to a fascinating conversation between Clay's parents. Hmm. His mother tells his father that he has to apologize for what he put him through as a child and provide some sort of closure for Clay. And she reveals that things she learned through this process have been very hurtful to her, things yeah. she did not know before. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. I was thinking that. I was like, did she know all that stuff? Is yeah. this just coming to light because yeah. of the show? Uh huh. Like How seven nuts years is into that? their marriage, seven years in. That's insane. He's being brought along. Can wow. you imagine? Oof. His mother. Wow. I'm okay. Talk about bearing a cross. Oh, she says the things Clay saw are things that he brought with him to the altar. And yeah. she's 100% right, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Trevor says he didn't have the best role models in his own life. His father wasn't part of his life. This this annoys me. Yeah, but also- it's the kicking, screaming. No, the, I- The sins of the father, they're passed down. I mean, this is, I, I agree that this is an excuse, but it's also true. Yeah, it can be both. Yeah. But to me, this was an, a frustrating, like knee-jerk retaliation. It's like, well, I didn't get it. It's like, listen to what she's saying. Like, look at the situation. He is a flawed man. He is not. I, Clay, I think, has already reached, maybe even surpassed his father's emotional yes, vulnerability. But he's not at where Clay needs to be yet. He's holding Clay back. Yeah. By not working on himself. Why don't, why don't mommy make your bet right now? What? Any amount of money. Clay's not married for at least 10 years. Ooh. Guaranteed. At least. Okay. You know, I'm not. Not that that's bad. And not that you oh, need yeah, to get I, I, married. I went, Ooh, like that's bad. I don't mean no, that at all. No, I'm just saying that he is not even close. Yeah. No, you're he's right. He's not even close. His mother says she's always told Trevor, so his father, that she forgave him. But despite them coming from broken families, it does not mean they have to pass their brokenness onto their children. Mm. Beautifully put. Trevor says Clay just needs to find someone like her, like his mother. Like he's talking to her. And oh, it's the best mic drop moment. She says, you met me, but you weren't good to me. Ooh. Oh, wow. 
Wow. <laughs> truth. So true. Unadulterated. Yeah. Well, adulterated. <laughs> the truth is not adulterated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry. <laughs> it's very low hanging fruit. Yeah, I know. It was yeah. really dark. <laughs> Having a rough day. You got to take what I can get. So back to Clay and AD. He says he learned so much about himself. It got scary. And she says she feels like a sacrifice. He mm. used her to learn so much about her yeah, himself. he did. And he asks if he has to leave her. And she says yes. And on the way out, he says, I don't want to go. And I wrote, boo who? Like, yeah. you knew you weren't going to get to have your cake and eat it too. You know what? I got to tell you, Clay's going to get over this in two weeks. Ugh. He's not ready. Sorry. I really believed in him. The sad part about this situation with both of these families is there's so many strong women here and uh, they've all been hurt. Yes. And they're all fantastic. Like they're, they're all so worthy. The, the, and then what happens is because their picker, they, they their I feel picker like- picker is broken. It, I don't even say it's broken. Like they have good taste. It's just their, their taste is based on the potential and they're not what is. They're trying to mold. Yes. Again, the clay analogy yeah, and bring yeah. it back. This is such a lesson in life. Yes. A Especially if you are a good person, you're yeah. a quality human. I'm not saying you should know that you're a quality human or think you're a shitty human. I'm just uh -huh. saying if you're particularly good, and I think it's it's without a doubt that AD is a good package Yes, in many ways. Yes. You need to pick someone who respects you 100%. You need to pick someone who you deserve. Uh -huh. You can't pick someone based on what you want them to be. Yeah. You have to pick someone based on what they are and how they treat you out of the gate. Mm -hmm. You know, what's funny. It's like that saying, you know, you can't change a person. Yeah. I remember hearing that when I was young, you know, and in your teens, you hear that about, you know, when you start dating and having boyfriends, but you know, you live life and you you date people. And in our case, you get married and you spend a decade together. And it's funny because it's so true. But also it's that's not to say the person doesn't change. They do change, but you can't change them. You can't. And if you do. You can inspire change in them that maybe they then do for themselves. But that's the most that's going to happen. They have to do it themselves. Correct. So finally, in her confessional, AD says she keeps getting so close. She's tired of carrying these relationships. She's not going to beg him to pick her. She's done. Oh, so sad. Stop I, caring. And I'm not sad about the outcome. I think that absolutely what should have happened happened. Meaning, like, I don't think the right thing would be him saying yes and then ending an engagement after six months. You know what I mean? Like that's what probably would have happened if he had said yes. So it's not that. It's just sad to see her be proven wrong for believing. But I also feel like this is sad because it's repetitive behavior on her part. Mm -hmm. I want to see her change direction. No, and his direction too, you know, this is a lot of self-work to ask someone to do in such a short period of time. Yeah. And I think he realized that, you know, when you start exploring the world of self-work, that's when you realize just how big a mountain it is. You yeah. know what I mean? And also seeing his father, just seeing his father probably yeah. showing a light on it where yeah. he's like, oh, wow, this is way too quick for me to get married. Totally. It makes me think of like travel of the world. Like the more you see of the world, the more you realize you don't know anything. So true. Okay. So we'll move on now to our tuna tartare, Andy, everyone's favorite appetizer, Amy and Johnny. I thought it was cute that Johnny's sister is a part of her wedding party. Yeah. That's how close they've become in such a short time. Johnny talks about all the specific things he loves about Amy and it's adorable. He really glows when talking about her. Amy, when getting her makeup done, says, I love when a man feels. Mm, mm. Yeah, It's so true. I do too. Yeah. I like what a man feels. And it's so funny to me when men are like kicking and screaming about that. It's like, no, I'm not going to feel. It's like, are you kidding? If you feel the world will open up to you, women will open up to you, your friends will open up to you. It's just hard to, you the, know. The older I get, the more I appreciate a man who feels too. Yeah. Like, like I don't, I don't love being with men who don't feel anymore. Yeah. I feel like your friendships have evolved yeah. as you've realized that. It's more. immature. Stunted growth. Totally. I feel in the end, like on your deathbed, not, it doesn't have to be on your deathbed. It could be like <laughs> shortly. <laughs> <laughs> several months before your deathbed, okay. you should be feeling at peak. Mm. The older you get, the more you should feel. And if you stop feeling at a certain age, you're stunted. Mm. And you need to think about that. Amy reveals here that she and Johnny never discussed their appearance while in the pods. We talked about that in the first recap. 
We completely agree with this. I think it should be complete. The show is called Love is Blind. It should be completely blind. No argument here. Amy's parents arrive and they are so cute. The way her father looks at her. Oh, yeah. Uh, he asks if she's still confident in her decision. She says yes. And he says, good. Okay, we'll stand behind you. I love this. Mm -hmm. It was like, there's no wrong answer. No. We've got you no matter what. And her father says he had his reservations about the experiment, but seeing her so happy, he's changed his mind. The way Johnny looks at her is what he expects for her husband. Very mm. cute. We finally meet Johnny's parents, and we couldn't believe how young his mother looked. Like, his mother looked like she could I, be I, his I sister. I thought it was his older sister. I really did. Yeah. Now their wedding, Amy comes down the aisle. Oh, I cried at this. Yeah. Amy comes down the aisle with her father and her brother on her other side, and her brother, this takes us all the way back to yeah. the pods when she mentioned her brother and how she will become her brother's primary caretaker one day and yeah. her partner needs to understand that and seeing him on her arm oh, like that man. and he just loves her oh, and man. she loves him i mean i wept oh we both we both were in rough shape did you cry i was welling up big time really i was there for you though i was supporting you i couldn't <laughs> be crying too you can cry and support me at the same time yeah i was close <laughs> yeah i it caught me off guard you were like who's that guy and then when they put his name there and showed who he was i was like Rah! oh man that was Oof. not the moment i was expecting to cry that was the only moment i cried this whole episode was yeah. her brother the efficient actually his future brother-in-law says these two have completely shown themselves to each other and in her vows amy says she loves his soul she's excited for what's next and in johnny's vows he basically just says i can't wait <laughs> wow andy you said he went very light on his vows <laughs> Do you think they skipped something? What was with this? Maybe he was shy. That's possible. Or maybe just lazy on vows. I don't know. Johnny Strong on love, lazy on vows. Johnny doesn't seem like the lazy on vows type, though. Maybe he didn't quite understand what the job title was there. Maybe he was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Like, do I have to do vows? I thought this is just a weird wedding. You know... <laughs> Yeah, it's not a real I mean, wedding. it is a weird wedding. No yeah. one's des not denying that. You know, part of me thinks that these two are just so ready to do it that they're like, he okay. Care. Honestly, if your vows are that short, I feel it bodes well for the marriage. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I don't need, I, it's it's just, I want to do this. There's two I don't have ways, time for this. There's stuff. two ways to unpack it. I mean, they have been talking about their feelings for each other a lot over Show, the don't last tell, few weeks. Right? Yeah. He's showing. He doesn't I, need to tell. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, we'll go easy on that him. That being said, every guy who spent like three weeks writing his vows is groaning. Amy says, I do. And Johnny says, I do. And everyone cheers. And even in their post-ceremony confessionals, it felt like they were almost over it you know they're like yeah yeah we love each other but it almost felt like can we start real life now yeah that's yeah. almost how it felt to me yeah like we're so good that we want to be off this show <laughs> yeah no it was amazing okay so ending moments now clay in his confessional says he feels stupid he just wants to get out of here honestly like off the show ad meanwhile says her love was blind but she will not continue to date clay and as we head into amy and johnny's reception andy you asked if there will be a postscript about chelsea and jimmy <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of blue balls oh, here. Oh, you wanted more. We're yeah. going to miss them on our screen. They're just so entertaining. I feel sick for, for liking watching them so much. I know. But we're not the only ones. No, I know. Yeah, other people had the schadenfreude, you said, right? It was deliciously terrible. Johnny closes the season with, if you really, really commit to it, love is blind. And Andy, you said, honestly, looking at this couple, I don't really think love is blind. <laughs> So what's your point? I mean, love is blind. When you're both As long attractive. as you look pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both obviously conventionally uh, I, attractive people. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like love is blind is even in the top 10 of what describes this relationship. <laughs> okay. So, no. <laughs> or really what describes this show. If anything, if anything is proven yeah. in this season, love is not blind. I her. think if anything is proven from the entire show. Yeah. Love is not blind. Yeah. And that's maybe the tongue in cheek, wink, wink of yes. Netflix. It's totally. like, look at this show. It's called Love is Blind, but we're proving to you that love isn't blind. Yes. And you're enjoying it because you're a sick mother. <laughs> 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 you know what this is like? This is like in the in the 90s when the, the U, pre UFC, uh -huh. when the UFC was cool. Okay. UFC, I hate UFC personally, but when the UFC was cool back in the day, it was like something out of an 80s kung fu movie. Okay. It would just be these variety shows where like it would be a contest of 16 fighters. Okay. And in one day they would get down to a winner. They'd okay. have like, it would be like a sweet 16. All right. And they would have like 400 pound 
karate champions, like ex NFL guys fighting like a hundred and fifty pound oh. like shoot fighter, guys who use their like ankles to okay. fight. This it sounds was, like physical one hundred. Yes, it was. Which in, I love, by the was, way. Yeah, that's a great show. Yeah, yeah. But it was so cool because oftentimes the tiny little guy would beat the much bigger guy because the style matched well. Okay. And it was just fascinating to watch, but it was also sick. Sometimes the little guy would get his ass kicked okay. by a huge guy, which is what you expected. But this is what this is like. It's just like, it's a mashup. It's like you get to see like different superheroes fighting each other yeah, and yeah. it always, doesn't always work. It usually doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, you get all the char- all these strong characters from all these different games and they're all fighting each other. Yeah, or Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. I think Super Smash Brothers was a better example. I agree. <laughs> okay, Andy, I think that's a wrap then for this finale recap. We mm-hmm. will be recapping the reunion. There's going to be so much to unpack oh. there. I cannot wait. It's the best part. Yeah. It's dessert. Definitely the dessert. Yeah, yes. It's like, do you have room for dessert? Like, <laughs> <laughs> do I? Whenever they ask that question, I'm like, uh, room? Like, don't ask me. Why you ask me? Just give yeah, me the menu. Yeah. I think it's a shame thing. They're trying to shame you. They want you to say, yes, I would like dessert. <laughs> it's sort of like asking for a lollipop at the bank or something. Oh, totally. Yeah. Just give the dessert menu. Just yeah. lay it down. It if you should... don't want dessert, you can easily say, please, we want the check. I yeah, don't want dessert. I completely agree. It should just appear. Yes. Yes. The dessert menu should just appear. Put it on me to deny yeah. it. I know it's shameful that I want <laughs> sweets in my body. Don't ask me. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews, tell your friends, and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Dear Shandy.